Today we moved the new Black Phantom Tetras and the Bristle Nose Plecos into the discus tank. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. The Tetras are scared. Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back once again to Solid Gold. As you may remember, six weeks ago, I got a new group of fish, and I got them from a local pet store near me. I initially got seven black phantom Tetras and two albino longfin bristlenose plecos. I didn't go into the store planning on buying fish, but anytime I walk into a local fish store, I'm always in the back of my mind thinking about the longfin albino bristlenose plecos, especially now that I have a discus tank, and they are one of the most common fish fish that are added as tank mates to discus tanks. But many years ago I used to have a 30 gallon tropical community aquarium and I had one albino longfin bristlenose pleco in that tank and I just loved that fish. Eventually I ended up breaking down that tank because I was still in college at the time and I had all of my fancy goldfish that I was taking care of as well and I wanted to focus all of my energy on the fish that I liked best which was of course the fancy goldfish. But now that I have a little more time in my daily life to focus on different kinds of fish other than just goldfish. I had it in the back of my mind every time I go into a local pet store that I'm gonna look and see if they have any albino longfin bristlenose plecos and if they do I might just have to get like one or two. So that's what happened this time. They happened to have a whole bunch of little baby ones and in talking to the person that worked there when I was picking out a couple of them he told me that he's the one that actually breeds them at his home and he has like a seven inch long male bristlenose pleco that he was the father of these guys. Since he he was the breeder of these fish he also was able to tell me the age of the plecos and he told me that at that time they were three months old so now they're a little bit over four months old which is pretty cool to know so I shared the video with you guys of setting up a quarantine tank for the tetras and the plecos but what I haven't told you is only about two days later I went back to the store and got a bigger group of black phantom tetras because I immediately regretted only getting seven I just thought it wasn't a big enough school of them so I added a whole bunch more and now I have a much bigger school which is why there's more of them now. <laughs> so these fish have been in quarantine now for about six weeks and my plan all along was to quarantine them for anywhere between one to two months and then add them to my 90 gallon discus aquarium which currently only has three discus in it but eventually I plan to add more discus to it. As you guys know discus are a little bit of a new fish for me and it's been a little bit of a learning curve and I'm getting a lot of my information from a forum called simplydiscus.com and the bristlenose pleco is one of the fish that's touted on that forum as being the best or one of the best tank mates for discus. So that in addition to just have having always wanted them is why I'm keeping them as tank mates with my discus. Now there's a couple concerns that I'm going to watch out for. The first thing is a lot of plecos are actually known for becoming quite territorial and aggressive and sometimes they will even latch on to other fish and feed off of the slime coat that the fish produce and you can tell when this is happening if all of a sudden you notice that your fish has like a big red sore on its side or something that's brand new. Maybe it popped up overnight because a lot of times the plecos will latch onto the fish while they're a bit more inactive and sleeping at night. So maybe you'll wake up to a new sore on your fish, you have plecos in the tank, and you can easily put two and two together and realize that's what happened. So this is why the common pleco and other plecos that are a little bit more aggressive like that are not usually said to be good tank mates for fish like goldfish or discus. Bristlenose plecos, on the other hand, are a little bit different. They usually stay a little smaller. Adult size is usually around four to five inches, somewhere like that. They also are a lot less aggressive and territorial than many of the other pleco species and they're much less likely to latch on and try feeding off of a fish than a lot of these other aggressive types of plecos are especially if everything in their habitat is the way it should be like they have ample food the water conditions are good and they have enough space that being said there are still reports of people who have both discus and plecos in the same aquarium who one day walk in and notice that the pleco is hanging off of their discus so I will be keeping an eye out for that and if I notice anything like that starting to happen I will immediately take the plecos out of the tank and figure out a different solution for them. The other thing about bristlenose plecos is that usually online you'll see that their temperature tolerances are a little bit lower than what is usually recommended for a temperature for a discus aquarium. And again that's another issue where there are people who actually report being able to keep their bristlenose plecos in higher temperatures with absolutely no problems at all long term. For the six weeks that I've already had them here in quarantine their tank has been anywhere from 85 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit and so far they're thriving. As soon as I put 
a new zucchini slice in, they're all over it like within seconds. They can smell it in the water and then they come find it and start eating it. It's pretty cute. And the black phantom tetras too have been really, really fun to watch. You know, I always used to think of tetras just as this little, almost minnow-like fish that's kind of boring, but you put them in your aquarium if you want like extra movement, you put a big school of them in your aquarium. But actually there's so much more to tetras than that and I'm so glad that I got this group of black phantoms because now my eyes have been opened to the world of tetras and I'm actually thinking they're way cooler than I ever did before. It's pretty fun to watch them because the males will do these interactions that are called mock battles where they posture at each other and they flare their fins out really aggressively looking to like assert dominance and make a pecking order in the group. They're very very fun during feeding because they all get super excited. They'll dart around near the top of the tank. See now even if I put my hand above the tank they think that they're going to be fed and they'll come right to me. So they're a pretty fun fish. All right, with all of that being said, I am going to scrape and scope these fish one more time because I did it last week with one of the tetras and I was a little nervous actually to scrape him because these fish are so little and I only have experience scraping and scoping goldfish and goldfish obviously are so much bigger and I worry a little bit less about hurting them. Uh, but these guys are so little I didn't know how they were gonna react, but they did just fine. Um, so this is my microscope slide. I don't know if you can see it. It's clear glass obviously. <laughs> And then the slip cover is what you use to actually scrape the fish. What I'm going to do here is scrape one of these tetras with the slip cover, put a little dot of tank water on the slide, and then smush the slip cover over it. And then we're going to look at it under the microscope because one last time I just want to make sure that these fish are clean and aren't carrying any parasites that I'm going to introduce into the 90 gallon discus tank. Because that would obviously be pretty bad. <laughs> when I scraped one of the tetras last week, I didn't see anything except for what I thought could possibly be a dead skin or gill fluke. It looked like the shape of one, but it wasn't moving at all, and it didn't show any signs of life whatsoever. Since I saw that, I treated the tank again with Praziquantil, which is a dewormer that works really, really well for flukes. And uh, I'm just gonna test them one last time because I'm nervous about introducing pathogens into one of my established tanks. But. I'm pretty sure everything's gonna be fine. All right, let's do this. news just as I had expected and hoped there is not a single living thing on this slide all right now that we have determined that these fish are parasite free let's go ahead and add them to the discus tank so I have this fish bag that I'm gonna fill up and I'm gonna put all the fish in here once I catch them so that I can float them in the new tank because there is going to be a slight temperature difference the discus tank is one or two degrees warmer than this tank is so there's going to be a slight temperature difference and I want to be able to acclimate them slowly to that rather than just dumping them in now the plecos and they actually might be a little more tricky to catch. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, they probably will be. <laughs> All right, I got the bigger one. You guys might remember I named these guys Flotsam and Jetsam, and I named them that after the uh, Disney movie, The Little Mermaid because that was the first movie that I ever watched when I was a kid. Ooh, I tricked him into the net. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm going to be really interested to see how the discus react to this. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's okay little guys. Oh my god. Every time they jump it scares me. They're scared right now because they're confined and they can't get away. But once they're in here they'll be able to swim away from the discus if they want to. The discus are just like so curious. They're like, but is it food though? All right, let's do this. So far so good, uh, the discus immediately rushed over to see what these new fish in their territory were all about, but they seem to be, for the most part, not going after them. Right now there's a couple of them looking at the pleco though, so that makes me nervous that they might try to pick on that. But I think once they realize that the new fish in their territory aren't a threat and they're not competing with them for the same resources, everything should be fine. Uh, it looks like after the discus initially checked out the tetras, they swam away and kind of left them alone. So now they're each, they've kind of declared a truce with the tetras all on one side of the tank and the discus all on the other side. I'll just keep watching them closely and see how it goes. Now black phantom tetras are actually not known to be huge fin nippers. So I'm not so much worried about them nipping at the discus as I am the other way around because discus can be pretty aggressive with other fish in their territory and can sometimes I think even eat really small fish that are in their territory but these black phantom tetras should be big enough to where they're gonna be for the most part left alone but right now it does look like they're going after the plecos a little bit yeah they're pecking at the plecos so that's bumming me out poor little guys I really hope they stop doing that because if they don't I'm gonna have to move the plecos now he's gonna go over to that one please leave him alone I think it's just initial curiosity and aggression, but I'm gonna keep watching them really, really closely over the next several hours just to make sure that the plecos get left alone because they don't deserve to be picked on. I'm nervous, but it should work out just fine once they all get used to one another being there. A small group of what's called dither fish, which tetras are, can help make the discus feel a little bit more comfortable in their home too because the dither fish are kind of like a signal fish that signals if there's danger in the environment or not. So if the dither fish are out swimming around, it signals to the discus or other larger fish like that that the coast is clear and everything's safe to be swimming around. Now after my initial problem with the discus being really, really shy, they actually have warmed up a lot and they're not shy of me at all anymore. So I don't really have a problem with that, but any extra comfort that can be provided in their environment 
certainly going to be welcome. This wood is fairly new in here. It's spiderwood and I switched out my Malaysian driftwood for spiderwood because the Malaysian driftwood pieces were really huge and clunky and they took up a lot of space, especially on the on the bottom surface of the aquarium and gunk was getting stuck under them. So I switched out all of my pieces of Malaysian driftwood for this larger piece of spiderwood and it has a lot of gunk on it because it started growing this white fungus, I think it is, and whatever else. Algae, probably some diatoms growing on it. So hopefully that'll be something the plecos can munch on in addition to their zucchini. So I'm just going to keep watching them really closely over the next few days here, especially in the next several hours, just to make sure that everyone's still getting along and there's no issues. Uh, based on what I saw so far, I'm not so much worried about the tetras and the discus as I am about the discus and the plecos because the discus were pecking at them a little bit, but they have since cooled off and stopped doing it, so I think that's a good sign. I think they're just figuring each other out, like, hey, what is this new fish in my environment? Is it a threat? Is it trying to take over my territory? What's going on? But so far so good. I will update you guys tomorrow on Facebook and Instagram so if you're not following me over on Facebook and Instagram yet you should go ahead and do that and Snapchat too. I'll do a little Snapchat video tomorrow of them too so you guys can see how everyone's still settling in. Don't forget guys I have brand new merch out. There's t-shirts, tank tops, hoodies all at the link below. It is teespring.com slash stores slash solid gold aquatics or you can just click on the link in the description below. Also I wanted to take a second to address the calendar drawing giveaways that I was doing. For those of you who purchased the calendar for this year I was doing a drawing of the fish on the calendar page for every month and then giving it away to one of the people who bought the calendars. I have not stopped doing that. I'm just really, really behind. So please forgive me, guys. It's just been a lot more crazy and hectic of a year than I ever could have anticipated. I got behind when I went on the Japan trip, which was really spur of the moment, and then I just haven't caught up since then. So please bear with me, but I have not stopped doing them. I plan to get caught up on them very soon here, so... Sorry about that. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, stay gold.